Lori. My nickname is Rini, and I'd like to welcome you to Rini Bovina Creations. If this is the first time you stop by to check out my channel, welcome. I do hope you like what you see, and if you do, please consider subscribing, hit that thumbs up button, and share with your fellow crafters. If you've been to see me before and you're back, I'm so grateful that you are. If you haven't already done so, it would mean a great deal to me if you'd hit that subscribe button. Again, hit that thumbs up and share with your fellow crafters. So I had a bit of a catastrophe last week. Um, I knew I was going to have to take a couple of weeks away from the crafting because I had some things I needed to take care of before winter comes. So I sort of binge crafted and did a whole bunch of videos with the intention of getting them all set up and scheduled and so I could have that couple of weeks. First one worked out just fine. And then somewhere between my camera and my laptop, we lost connection and I lost all the rest of my videos and actually uh, all my holiday photos, so I was not very happy. So this video is quite late, usually up, I upload either Sunday or Monday at the latest. Yeah, that's not happening this week, so we'll do our best. Um, I will get back on schedule here pretty quickly, uh, but for this video we are going to stick with the fall theme. Um, I really, really like the soft teals and whites and those kind of colors that they've been incorporating. It doesn't really match the inside of my house, but I, I did make a couple for the deck just so I could play with those colors, and I really, really hope you like it. So I'm going to stop yakking at you, and we'll get on with the crafting. Alright everyone, so I had a bit of a catastrophe, which I, I mentioned already, where I lost a lot of my footage. It just was gone. So part of this craft has sort of been started, um, but it's nothing that I can't explain or that you can't figure out, I'm quite sure. So what it is, is I bought two of these at the thrift store for a dollar, which I love. But I wanted to rough them up just a little bit, didn't want them to look quite so clean and pristine. So, I just took some of my brown paint and my white paint, and where did I put my blotter, there it is. And just sort of did, it's not quite a dry brush, it's, there's a little paint on there, but I just sort of touched it here and there, just to make it look a little bit more aged, and I did this with the white as well. So what we're doing, is, this is a fall craft, and I do love the teals and the whites and stuff that they've got, the sort of muted ones for the fall season. It doesn't match my inside decor real well, but I love them. So on my outside, um, I've kind of got some of these colors because I did sort of a nautical theme on my deck. So I thought this would complement that and I could play with those beautiful colors I absolutely love. So this was my way of incorporating that. So again, just wherever you think, and if you don't want that look, you can skip this step entirely and just, you know, find, and they, this, though I got this one from the thrift store, I've seen similar kinds of things at the dollar stores and, you know, the Dollaramas and all of those, so you should be able to find something similar, if not exactly the same. So then just to do the same thing with the white. And I'm using a white chalk paint. You can certainly use acrylic. Mine is a homemade chalk paint. Um, next time I actually make it, I'll kind of maybe pay closer attention to the amounts I use, but I just kind of know by consistency now. So all you do is you mix your white paint um, with a little bit of water and then plaster of Paris. I, in a pinch I've done baking soda or cornstarch. It will work. I don't like it as much. It's kind of more gritty, although I have projects that I actually wanted that for and it, it did a nice job. But there's all kinds of recipes on Pinterest or whatever. Um, I do like the Waverly. Just can't get my hands on it right now, so we're improvising. So I think oh I didn't do the roof with the I think 
that's about all I want. I just wanted a little bit, just, you know, just a little. That's more dimension. Did not run on the roof, so we're gonna have just a bit. And that's all I'm doing to the frame itself. So now for the pumpkins, and this is part of the footage I lost. So I did give them a couple of coats of chalk paint. Um, and then, to get that sort of muted look, I just mixed some white paint with a teal, and just to get a very light teal color. And then I just sort of, again, a little bit thicker than dry brush, but not very much paint, and I just painted around. I also do the same thing on these little terracotta pots and they're the perfect size to fit in those so again just gave them a coat of the white chalk paint and I didn't go crazy I want them to look a little bit old and worn so I didn't give them total coverage and then I kind of just did the dry brush technique on the terracotta as well so just random just to incorporate it just a little bit much or as little as you like. You can leave it out entirely. Whatever suits you and your preference and decor style. And of course if the teal isn't your decor style you can do with the oranges and the, the traditional more traditional fall colors which is what most of my house is in anyway so we'll be doing a lot of that. And once I was happy with the, about the coverage I'm looking for I'm going to go in and do the same thing with the brown. And the brown, I just want it very light, so it's going to be a real sort of dry brush. I don't want much of the brown, just enough to sort of distress it a bit. And don't worry about the inside, you're not going to see it when we're done, so that's can stay just how it is and so that's kind of what we're gonna do I'm gonna do the same thing on my pumpkin just a dry brush with a little bit of the brown but I'm kind of going to go down the seams to just draw up the seams I don't know if that's what you call it the grooves I guess in the pumpkin just to sort of give it that little bit more depth and sort of make that stand out a bit but just a very light coating two pumpkins done. So I did the other one already and oh, and I do want to paint the stem because this one looks very plasticky. So we're going to just give that a quick coat of brown paint. There we go. So that's our pumpkins. So now what I'm going to end up doing is putting our pumpkin on it and putting it in our in our little cage there so I do want to jazz it up a bit sorry let me just get some of the stuff we don't need out of the way here all right so I've got some little white flowers and then I've got these leaves now these ones I'm okay with the color of I think they're sort of a muted enough that will work but I did want to again add some of the white um, into it and some, a little bit of the teal. So I got, these are just from my stash, right? Like nothing special leaves. But I'm going to separate them and I'm gonna paint them white. Now again, I'm not gonna go completely opaque, but we want them muted, like, kind of like the colors here. So just bear with me while I take them apart. And then I may do the teal as well. So we'll just see how they sort of come out. want a bit of all of that, I guess. You know? So 
So I thought I would do the white on these because I do like the deeper green and let some of that come through. So we're going to paint one side and then the other. So I'm going to flip them all over so they're all facing right. Oh, I did put my white paint away even though I still want it. going to paint right over them. So I've done both sides, front and back, and you can see the green is still coming through a bit, which is what I was going for. I figured it would. So we'll let those dry out a bit. Now I decided with these ones I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to paint them white, but then I am going to sort of edge them with that teal. So I'll give them a coat of the white, just like that. I'll do both sides here, and I don't mind if it's you know, not perfect coverage again because I do want it to be a leaf, and nature's not perfect. I'll give them a paint, and then without even cleaning my brush because I sort of want it to blend. Sorry, I pulled that one away too. I forgot what I was going to be doing. I'm just going to go into the teal and just around the edges. Then again, just as much or as little as appeals to you, or skip the step. are all dry. I've got some of these little sticks from a, an old swag I took apart, some raffia, some ribbon. So now is the fun part. Now is when we are going to put the whole thing together. So, got the trusty beat up, sad looking, but ever so reliable glue gun. I'm just going to start with the big leaves at the bottom and layer that way. So these nice muted leaves that were just part of my stash of fake flowers. Now if we put the pumpkin in the middle, we've just got some of this other foliage coming out still. This is where maybe we'll just play a bit more with some of the sticks, some of the raffia. I was going to incorporate any of these or not, but I think I 
might just put one up top. And maybe I'll just get another sort of muted green leaf to go with it, I'm thinking is what I seem to like right now. We are going to add some more sticks. start working with some of this ribbon which I found at you guessed it the dollar store and this one actually was the dollar store and I might mix it with the raffia I'm gonna take off a fair amount and I think I will get me a good piece of raffia as well and I'm going to wrap them together shiny side out here. So I'll just wrap them around my hand. I think adding a bit of white in here would be really pretty too. So I got them all wrapped. And now I'm just going to cut off some of this excess raffia. Well, that's not a very good bow, is it? It's quite terrible actually. Let's try that again. Push it out a bit. Tail's still a little bit long. Now I'm not sure about that. Alright, so I changed my mind about how it was going to this ribbon so we've got a little bit of white this teal sparkly one and some raffia and I'm just gonna do a shoelace bow I was originally gonna do a bigger bow but I just thought it was too big for this project it didn't seem to work very well I wasn't happy I'm gonna do just a little shoelace bow also thinking I might do. Let me just see what I think of this. Yeah, I might just tuck some little tendrils in there as well. So, let's start by gluing the bow on. 
being fairly generous with that glue. And with the flower, it's got this thing, I don't want it to poke up so much. I'm not going to cut it all off because sometimes it makes the flower fall apart, but I did cut it down a bit. So there's our little pumpkin ready for in. Once I get rid of all this hot glue stickiness, ready to go into our little cage. So oh, that was already open. Stick them in. For the other one as well. And then once he's all done, they're both ready to go. We'll keep the pictures where they belong. 